Well, greetings, test takers. Uh, this is Dean Tinney. I'm coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. We do take a lecture request, and we had a lecture request for callers. Uh, you haven't seen callers on the channel until just now because it's very low probability. But a caller is when we are along the stock and we sell the call to fund the purchase of a put. If you're familiar with the covered call strategy, which is very testable, and you're familiar with the protective put, which is very testable, this is kind of a hybrid of both of those, right? As you recall, in a covered call, you're generating income by agreeing to sell the stock. And as you recall, in a protective put, you're establishing the choice to sell your stock. You're putting in a floor, you're doing construction that costs money. So a caller is when we are long and short, uh, short the call and long a put on a stock that we own. So let me show you what that looks like and why it's called a caller. So uh, a caller is uh, long the Apple stock. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell the 185 call. I'm going to sell short, right, the 185 call. I'm going to create the obligation to sell Apple at 185. And I'm going to use the proceeds from that to uh, fund the purchase of that 165 put. So I'm gonna have a ceiling here at, uh, you know, again, not testable what Dean thinks about options, but you know, if you've been following me for a while, I don't know how long you've been a follower perhaps, uh, but I think of options as being about floors and ceilings. And so there's a floor here, excuse me, there's a ceiling here and there's a floor here. I think of options as being about floors and ceilings. So there's a floor at 165 and there's a ceiling at 185. So uh, that's what that kind of looks like. Now I'm gonna put this in the series seven exam uh, playlist. I'll put it in the options playlist. I'll put it in the four and nine. And like I say, very low probability, this is more of a vendor issue than it is actually you know, uh, uh, something you're gonna encounter on the test, very low probability. But like I say, if you were a loyal subscriber to the channel, and you have a request, uh, you know, we try and fulfill that request. So, all right, so let's get started on showing you what this looks like. So an investor goes long 100 shares of Apple at 175, or excuse me, at 170, a share and writes one Apple October at 185, call it three and three quarters, 3.75, and buys an Apple at 165, put it at 375. Now, again, you don't have to do what Dean suggests but one of the things I always suggest is you have some kind of a process. And the process I like to follow is I always like underneath the option leg, not testable, that's called leg. I like to say, okay, what am I looking at? What I'm looking at here is an obligation to sell the Apple stock at the strike price, sell the stock at this case at 185, that's the strike price. And again, not a problem because I actually have the apple. So that's not a problem. And then particularly on puts, you know, I can't stress having a process because puts are the ones that tend to throw people for a loop. I like to use the word choice, but you can use choice or right, whatever floats your boat. And this is a right or choice to sell the apple stock that I own at uh, 165, the strike price. So that's what that looks like. Now, uh, when I'm uh, it, with, in the options playlist, if you go through that, we have, this will be, I guess, the 10th strategy because there's nine that are high probability that you should definitely know. But when I put this in the, uh, the playlist, as I said, it's low probability. But I always warn people that if you uh, don't understand contract specifications and you can't track money, then you're going to have to memorize all kinds of stuff. And I'm just not a big fan of memorizing all kinds of stuff. What I'm a big fan of is that instead of memorizing a bunch of stuff, you get good at contract specifications and you can track money. Because if you can do that, then you don't have to memorize a bunch of stuff. So, you know, again, your kind of choice about how you want to proceed here. Uh, but what I'd like to do is say, okay, well, I paid 170 for the Apple. I'll, I'll put that in red since it's money out. I'll be you know, clever. And I uh, paid three and a quarter, 3.75 for the protection. And then I brought in 
375 here. Boom. And you know, on the test, what they're gonna offer you is uh, something as a break even. So let's just say we're looking at our answer set. And this is why I like people to try and get good at learning a T because if you get good at learning a T, then you don't need to memorize a bunch of stuff. You simply know that this break even has gotta be a number that if we plug it in there, would make the columns balance. And now if you wanna do that, then you gotta memorize it's gonna be the stock cost plus or minus the net debit or premium or net debit or credit on this uh, position, which I just think is a mess. Told you it's very low probability anyways, but I could just uh, try that and say, okay, well, let me, uh, they offer me here 170. I just plug in the numbers. I say, oh yeah, that works. Uh, because that's what break even is, right? Break even is same dollars out as dollars in. So. I could simply plug the numbers in until I get one that makes the columns balance because that's what break even is. Same dollars out is dollars in. Now, I also like this. The reason I don't mind going over this too is I do want you to try and get more familiar uh, with the T. And what I mean by that is tracking money in and out and doing what we call setups and closeouts. And if you can get good at that, right? Now, I want to war warn you, this is numbers I'm introducing. So I've seen people get upset or get confused with their T when they're introducing numbers. So, you know, those top numbers come from looking at what's gonna happen in terms of the uh, option or the stock, right? So that's what that comes from. So break even 170. Nobody does things to break even. So an investor goes along 100 shares of Apple at 170 a share and writes one Apple October 85 call at 375 and buys an Apple October 165 call put at 375, what is the maximum loss? So again, uh, I think it's important that you can, in terms of uh, doing the purchase and the offsets, kind of look at this. And so again, what that means is, I'm gonna look at this and say, okay, well, I paid uh, 170 for the Apple stock. I paid uh, three and three quarters for the protection. So it's important those were purchases. So that's where how you know that goes on the dollars out. I call it dollars out. Some people call it a debit. Some people call it a minus sign, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. And then what I like to do is say, okay, well, boom, here's this. That's money in. And uh, maximum loss, remember, is the stock goes down. But as you recall, as you recall, that's what the nifty thing here is. And that's why this is important, is I have a choice to sell the stock at 165. That's what that is. And so uh, I think, again, this is why I think this is important, because you need to know that this is the offset, right? You know, I bought the stock, I'm gonna be able to sell that stock. And here I can sell the stock at the strike price, which is 165, that's my floor. That's my floor. And so the most I can lose here is five points. This is a cashless caller. Remember the caller, the caller didn't cost me anything because you know, it could have cost me something. But what I mean by that is that the put could have cost more than the call or the call could have brought in more than the put, but this is called a cashless caller. Cashless because we're not spending any money to do this, right? We're paying 375 for the protection, but we're bringing in 3.75 by selling the call, which is the point, by the way, we're selling the call to fund the purchase of the put. Uh, by the way, again, uh, I just think it would be a mental mess to try and memorize that. I think the uh, better way to proceed is just to net your columns, right? You say, okay, well, you know, it looks like uh, I am going to be out 173.75. And I can bring in 168.75. I'll put that in green. And that's the whole point of the strategy, by the way. There's a floor at 165, right? So that's what that looks like. So my max loss is uh, five points. Max loss is five points. And again, I would use a D. I wouldn't try and memorize that. 
All right, investor goes along 100 shares of Apple at 175 or 170. I don't know why I'm saying 175, excuse me. 170 share and writes one Apple, October 185, call at three and a quarter and buys one Apple, October 165, put at 375. So remember, we have a ceiling here. We have a ceiling here at 185. Uh, let me get a smaller font. And we have a floor here at 165. And we looked at the uh, the floor. We looked at our maximum loss and said, well, good news for me. You know, I can sell it anytime I want at 165. But remember the disadvantage of a covered call, or in this case, a caller. That's why it's called a caller, right? The caller is 165, 185. Uh, the uh, problem with having that call contract always is I don't participate past the strike price. I don't participate past the strike price. Now, again, I'm not putting the ABCD here. I'm suggesting you use the T and then you simply shop, you know, your answer set for whatever the appropriate uh, answer is. I'm also suggesting, I'm also suggesting that what you should do is on things on a per share basis. I can't tell you how many people get messed up because they got all kinds of zeros flowing around. If this were like 10 contracts, if this was 10 contracts, and a thousand shares of Apple, I personally wouldn't put 170 grand in here and 3,750. I would do things on a per share basis. And then when I'm all done, say, okay, what does that look like? All right, so here we are again. Uh, we paid uh, 170 for the Apple. We uh, paid uh, 3.75 for the put contract. And we brought in, we brought in 375 for the 185 call. Five call. Uh, boom. And again, I highly recommend, you know, what Dean recommends is not testable, but you know, what you really want to kind of try and do is get really good at just looking at these things and saying, okay, you know, what is that contract specification? This is an obligation to sell the stock at 185. And that is my, at the strike price. That's what that is, right? So I'm not going to participate past the strike price. In terms of, uh, you know, again, offsetting this thing. When I go to offset, right? If I exercise my put, that's 165. If the stock gets called away from me, right? I don't talk to say dare. So the stock gets called away from me. Remember what that means? That means I sold the stock at the strike price. And that's one of the disadvantages of this strategy is I don't participate past the strike. I have to give up the uh, Apple stock at 185. And then what we can simply do is just net those columns. It looks like it's gonna be 15 points, right? I'm terrible at arithmetic, by the way. So I wouldn't trust my ability to eyeball something and uh, see if that's correct. So we put our boom. And again, we just net that out. We say, okay, well, we, we're out 173 and three quarters. Whoop. And let's put that in red. And we uh, brought in, this looks like we're a winner, 188.75. And uh, that looks like it's at 15 points. Let's just, I'm just gonna make sure that, that I'm netting that correctly. Indeed, indeed. All right. so. The floor is uh, 165, the ceiling is 185, that's our max gain. And then what I would do is just shop my answer set. And I'm looking for something here that would say it's a gain of uh, 15 points on 100 shares. So that's what I would be doing. Again, you could memorize, but I think that's kind of a, a mental mess. So, you know, but whatever you wanna do, that's, that's up to you. It's a buffet, the channel's a buffet. My goodness, this will be like the 17th lecture on options. So, you know, take what you like, leave what you don't. All right, an investor goes along 100 shares of Apple at 170 a share and writes one Apple 185 uh, call at 375 and buys that. At expiration, Apple is 147. What is the gain or loss? Well, again, it's the same thing again, right? Because at 147, what you got to recognize is our floor is 165. So it doesn't matter to us. Now, that's 15 minutes. I told you I'm trying to bring these in at under 15 minutes. 
it looks like I'm a little over. But anyways, uh, let me know. I do both longer narrative lectures and little shorts like this. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll go back. To, I just had some idea what happened to the longer lectures. I'll get, go back to those. But, you know, there's our floor. So we got to recognize that's the whole point here is that, again, we're not going to have to worry about that. That's the whole point of the cashless caller is putting in that floor at 165. So again, what I'm going to do here at expiration is I'm going to exercise the put, or if I don't do it, it'll be exercised automatically because that's part of my option agreement. That's part of my option agreement. So again, uh, it looks like this. This is the last time I'll show this to you. Boom, 170, three and three quarters. We're going to exercise, well, let's put this in here first. You know, here the uh, call is going to expire, worthless. And we're going to exercise the put, 165. Uh, let me just put that 375 in there, that was 375. Boom. And I'm going to put over here that the put, uh, the call expires worthless. All right, so that's what that looks like in terms of that T. Now, one other point, one other point. Let me just see where I'm at here. Uh, you know, sometimes they might have a real mess, a real mess on the test. So let me show you a real mess. I don't know if I made a slide for, the, for a mess or not. Let's, let's see if I have. If I haven't, I'll go back and fix it. All right, so let's see. Okay, well, I came in just about under uh, a little over 15 minutes, but what I want to do real quick is show you again how come this is so important in terms of, I have another lecture coming up where I'm going to show you opening and closing transactions. But uh, I told you, I really like this idea uh, where people get hung up is they can't do a setup and then they can't do a closeout. And so the nasty of this can get is that instead of uh, exercising these options, I ask you to offset all this. And what I mean by that is close all this stuff. And so that's why you got to know, okay, well, the close here goes this way, right? Because I bought the stocks, so I'd be selling that. That close goes that way. And then this goes this way, right? And so maybe they say, um, oh, let me just give you one last example of this before we call this lecture quits. Let's say uh, the stock is Apple is at 168 and I close out at, well, that's I'm not gonna give the puts any, any intrinsic value. Um, let's just do that 147 again. And instead of uh, saying that I exercise my put, I'll just make this really complicated that I uh, closed out the options for intrinsic value and I sold the stock at 147. So I closed out the options at intrinsic value and I sold the stock at 147. So with Apple at 147, I sell the stock. So again, I'll put that in there. Uh, this expires. Now, oh, by the way, I don't know why anybody except welcome to Series 7 Fantasyland. Nobody would do this uh, in the real world. They would just exercise the put. But I'm just showing you, you know, again, how you set this all up, right? Uh, the call expires. So now we got to deal with the put and the intrinsic value of a 165 put with uh, Apple at 147 is 18 points. Uh, so that's going to be 18 points in for the put. And then again, we would just net all that out to see what ultimately the gain or loss is. I think it's still going to be the 10 points because of the, you know what we ended up doing with the uh, contract. Okay, so uh, I hope you found that. If you found that helpful, uh, smash that like button. Uh, tell me in the comment box whether, uh, again, you like long uh, narrative lectures that we have in the options playlist or you like little shorter things like this. Uh, if you have any lecture requests, uh, let me know. Uh, I usually upload new content on Tuesday, but this is a little shorter and it was a request. So I'm just going to immediately upload it to the channel. So uh, like I say, but normally Tuesday is when we upload uh, new content. So I don't know, call this a, a, a I don't know, a freebie. <laughs> All right, test takers. Good luck. Bon chance, mes amis, my friends. And until next time.